Hey YouTube, we're gonna be um, I'm gonna be um, doing a little small review here about the Mosin the Got. I just got this uh, right here. I just got this uh, at Cheaper and Dirt. Paid ninety nine dollars for it. Cheaper and Dirt's a pretty good store. Uh, they're local, so I can do catalog pickup or just go into the store and pick up some stuff. Uh, this Mosin the Got is a ninety one thirty. It's actually the third Mosin uh, the Got. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's the third one that I've owned in my lifetime. Uh, first one was probably about 10 years ago, maybe less, maybe 8, 9, 10, I don't remember how long ago. Bought it at a gun show. Uh, I think I paid like $79 for it. And I kept it for almost less than, less than a year. Uh, I think I ended up hawking it and losing it. And then um, I just, that, that rifle, I, I don't remember what model it was. It was shorter. It wasn't this long one. It might have been one of the rare ones. Who knows? It's a long time ago. Uh, didn't really pay attention to it. It was just a beat up rifle, truck rifle that I had. Uh, second one uh, I had was the actual sniper model of the 9130 had the original sniper scope on the side I think I paid like $700 for that one uh, that one I got maybe about three or four years ago it was pretty I got it because um, I had the I got the original M40 uh, Remington M40 model the, the Vietnam era sniper rifle I bought that one and uh, I wanted to get the counterpart of what of what was used in the Vietnam War against that rifle, so I bought the the, uh, the sniper rifle that was used against that M40 rifle, and I had the set, the pair, and uh, I ended up trading the, the Molson to a friend of mine. I think he pawned it and lost it. Anyways, now, this is the third one. Uh, I was inspired by a few YouTube videos, um, nothing fancy. Uh, he got he got some pretty good stuff on the Molson they got, and I think an uh, Iraq veteran or something like that. He's got a pretty good series of that uh, most of the guy and it inspired me to go ahead and go buy another one of these uh, I'm not gonna do it I'm gonna do a couple of, of videos on it hopefully my wife's filming uh, so I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with this one uh, I just wanted to document it and uh, do a little video small video on it of uh, the opening I opened this earlier down here I opened this earlier uh, today and then I take it back up because I wasn't ready to to mess with it so I'm gonna go ahead and reopen it and uh, just so you guys can see what what actually I thought it was pretty cool it came in a nice box you know and this here, here's the box see if you can't get that in the entirety the length of it and here's the accessories that comes with I thought it was pretty cool you know you saw hopefully you saw the hopefully you saw the, the tag on there it was $99 I think I paid it $108.24 after taxes, that's what I what I get for the for the rifle, which is $108.24. Uh it's not bad. You know, um, this is what it comes with. <sighs> Looking right here. I mean I know there's a lot of YouTube videos out there that shows the accessories, but I just wanted to go ahead and do this one because I haven't even really opened this. It's got a lot of Cosmoline, Cosmoline or Cosmoline or whatever you call that. Gunk or goo. So that's why I put the gloves on. And um, here's here's another one. Oh, by the way, the other sniper, the, the sniper model that I had bought before a few years back, that I was talking about with the original sniper scope, I got that for Military Gun Supply. That's also another local store that I'm, I know some of you guys probably have dealt with in, in the past, but I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be local here in Dallas Fort Worth. That's what the two. Some of the, I got a lot of great suppliers out in this area. Here's another little pouch. I don't know what's in there. It's just plain. So, it's probably for the cleaning kit. Here's the fancy little oil. It's got a lot of cosmic in it. I think oil or solvent or whatever. Pretty cool. Another mag pouch or a clip pouch. Most in the clip. Stripper clips. Sling. The leather goes in through there. Um, it's pretty. It's nice. It's thick sling. Looks sturdy. I don't see any reason why I would want to get another sling for this rifle. Might as well use the original one. And then I guess here's the little tools. I'm sure all the other most of the gaunt videos out there has the same setup. I've seen a lot of these. Now this right here, I think you put a cotton string. You put a cotton string on here, and this serves as your patch. This is how the, 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 they used to do it. They would put a string through here and wrap the string around around these little 
these little grooves or whatever and, and run it through the bore and that cotton string would, would be your patch instead of using a patch system. I never know what the hell this thing is for. Never did understand what what that shit was. But who knows? Maybe some of you professionals out there can tell me. But um I know this this handy little tool here serves as your screwdriver and your to gauge your firing pin, make sure that it doesn't supersede the limit that you want. There's a lot of YouTube videos on that and of course this is the board guide to uh, protect your crown or your, yeah, your crown so anyways a couple things I wanted to point out about these I hate the boat design on these Moss and the Gots I think it's man it's terrible terrible boat design that's just my opinion I know there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna say what are you talking about Moss and the Gots the best rifle ever built I think it's a good rifle I don't think it's the best rifle ever built but hell for a hundred dollars I think it's the best hundred dollar rifle you can buy absolutely Absolutely the best hundred dollar rifle you can get at this at this time and of age. Yeah, absolutely um, The rifle itself shoots a 7.62 by 54 R the 54 R the R don't stand for Russian it stands for rimmed uh, Actually, I have some some rounds in, in my office and I'm doing this in my living room because my shot my um, My office or my my room that I use for all my reloading my reloaded bench and all that I'm kind of in the process of remodeling that or building another workbench so i uh, got shit everywhere in there so i'm just doing this in my living room um before i put this up and i got a lot of projects going on so it'll be a while before i get that straightened up but uh anyways i have some ammunition ammunition for this uh particular but i don't want to go back there and get it right now so anyways it, it, it shoots a 7.62 by 54 r and from my understanding it's uh lit it's the ballistics on that is in between the US uh, 308 and the 30 out 6 it's got a little bit more range than the 308 not as quite as much as the 30 out 6 which the 30 out 6 and the 308 probably like 75 feet uh, or something 75 yards my bad 75 yard difference um, maybe 100 yards at the most so it's very it's very very capable rifle uh, I shoot 308 and I've shot 308 for a very long time and I have precision 308s and uh, I, I am a fan of the 7.62 projectile and this is this is a good this is a good accurate rifle it's been proven on the battlefields since I think before World War II um, but I know World War II it proved itself it, and uh, you know they made a whole movie about it and not only that but it was also used in uh, Vietnam and other conflicts and this was I, I believe uh, the uh, sniper rifle for many many wars so I, I know that it's a good accurate rifle uh, and especially this model or the other PU version or PE I don't know what it's called but the other version that has the other little I, I don't like that scope the sniper rifle issue of this uh, rifle has a little four power scope on there and it's got a three point design on the I, I wish I had one of those scopes to show you guys but I don't like that scope I think it's trash I mean, I know it's proven a lot of people are going to hate me for saying that, but I think that there's better glass that you could put on one of these old rifles. I know it's a $100 rifle, and people say, why would you put a, a more expensive scope on a cheap rifle? I'd rather be shooting a $100 rifle with a $1,000 scope than a $1,000 rifle with a $100 scope. So that's just my theory on that. Uh, you you want better glass, and, 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 and these days, the glass that was used back then... Uh, these days if you're gonna get one of these and you're gonna sporterize it this one this one's I, I don't know if this is made by Tula or whatever but this is not one of the real fancy collectors so I'm probably gonna end up sporterizing this not so much uh, as you know putting a new stock on it I'm gonna keep it basic but I might bend the bolt I might drone tap the cheap scope mount and then put a scope on here I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with this one yet and I might pick up a few more of these before they're they're no longer available. I mean, I know that there's a, that, a million of these things built, but uh, you know, who knows what will happen in the future? They're not gonna always be a hundred bucks, I don't think. Or if that, I don't know if they're gonna always be available, or you might start getting somewhat bad bores. I haven't looked down the bore on this one. You saw me open it up, so I don't know what it's gonna be giving me. But I'm gonna try to do some uh, videos on this particular rifle, and if I get some more, I'm gonna also do videos on those so that you guys can uh, see the, prog the progress on that. Um, I haven't made a lot of videos. I'm gonna start making a lot more videos, uh, just because it's something to do, you know. But um, 
Anyways, uh, I wanted to get some particulars on this rifle. Let me see. This rifle is come on, damn it. from muzzle, from muzzle to the tip here. It's a little over four foot, four foot and a half inches. So that would be what, 48 and a half inches. Um, just a quick assessment of the barrel from muzzle to to the ring of the receiver here. We're looking at 28 inches. Well, it's a little less than 28 inches, but of course you got the thread, the thread that goes inside the receiver. So I believe this is a 28 inch barrel. I don't know the twist, but I will find that out later and try to learn how to annotate it on the video so I can maybe text it in and see what the twist is. I, I you know, just run a rod through it with a stiff patch and measure the rod. I, I, I'll, get, I'll get the twist rate and see what that is. Um, for a uh, 7.62 projectile, I would like to be running maybe a 1 in 10 inch twist. Hopefully that's what, what this rifle has. If not, maybe a 1 in 12. Uh, I don't know what they were rifled at. So. But I'm going to find that out. A um, couple things right off the bat that I know I don't like about these rifles is the magazine uh, the magazine box or the magazine well. I know that, that a lot of people have problems loading that. And I know sometimes it, when you're using the action, I don't think the bow design is very a very good bow design. I know it's rigid. I know it's very basic. And I know it works. So I know the trigger... I'm going to be doing a lot of work into this too. I'm going to be polishing a lot of stuff inside there and working the trigger a little bit. And see that's, I'm not, I'm not a sissy lava by any chance. And that bolt's kind of stiff. So I would hate to be using it like that. But Iraqi veteran or Iraq veteran or Iraq veteran, I know he has some videos on how to how to smooth that out and I'm going to take his advice on some of that stuff and put incorporate some of my own knowledge into into how to making this a better action but um for now man that's all I got hope you like the video Hurrah. hit stop